What, uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is talk about some techniques and tips uh, and some of the procedures that I go through when I'm demonstrating, like drop your paper and things like that, um, that I have found to be successful as a demonstrator. It consists of uh, basically four steps we'll get into. Um, I've, uh, I've demonstrated a number of different clubs. I've seen a lot of demonstrations, probably the same as you have. And so what I'd like to do is before we begin uh, talking about the steps, etc., is ask a couple questions from you guys, get some input. The demonstrations that you've seen, you've seen, uh, I'm sure a number of them. What good things have you seen about a demonstration? What, what, what would you share that you've seen that was good about a demonstration? They showed what they were going to turn, so you had a picture of where they were going. Okay, one of the things is that they showed you the finished product. Well, <coughs> anything else? Basically an outline of what they're going to present to you. They're going to show you something, then they're going to demonstrate it, and they're going to answer questions. That's what show you their skills. Okay, so what they did is provided you with an outline to begin with, so you knew what it was. Uh, what was expected? So it wasn't uh, uh, a surprise in what you saw? They were organized. They were organized. That's a good point. Confidence of the uh, presenter uh, just having his or her ducks in the row and the organization piece and the pre plan I think that uh, we talked about uh, <coughs> I want to talk about having confidence as a, as a demonstrator. And one way to have that confidence is to be prepared, is to be organized. So it's the preparation, it's the organization, it's uh, displaying confidence. Be prepared for emergencies. <laughs> be prepared for emergencies. Be prepared for the unexpected. Redundancy. Redundancy, yeah. Yeah, and, and the handouts are really important. Okay, the handouts are important. I agree. I agree very much about that. I think Hannah's, we'll talk about that in a little minute. I think any good teacher remembers what it was like when they didn't know anything. Give me, a, give me a little more when you say... Well, there's an awful lot of experts out there that have long since forgotten what it was like to be a beginner. And therefore, they don't know how to talk to beginners. They talk to experts. Uh, right. That's a good point. What he's talking about is he's saying that one of the problems is that <clears throat> it's an expert talking to another expert. And they sort of leave out everyone in between. They start in the middle. Yeah, and you really, you need to consider who your audience is, and we're going to talk about that, uh, who your audience is, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and at what level you're going to be teaching. So you don't uh, leave too many people behind, uh, and you don't talk down. He's talking about uh, being an uh, enthusiastic demonstrator, etc. Uh, I guess you don't want to be just a, a, in one spot. Well, <laughs> I'd probably go overboard. Um, I move around a lot. But the idea is that uh, you're up there and you want to be able to, sh I mean, you can be excited. You're having fun turning, you, you share that. And that comes across. I think getting, getting your audience involved as much as possible and letting them go. Jim's talking about getting the audience engaged. I also agree. I think engagement of the audience is very important. Any, uh, let's talk about some of the things that you would rather you didn't see in a demo. Some of the, some of the quote, uh, bad things. Or things you'd recommend that not be done. Mostly the opposite of all of <laughs> Well, give me some, some, some specifics. We'll talk to Mike about that. Uh, what is what she's talking about? <laughs> Sorry, you're allowed to speak louder. We can't. I can't hear it either. <laughs> so I, I, I understand. We are good. I, I'm, I'm here. That's why I'm walking in here. I can't hear. Um, what she's saying is a really good point. The cameraman actually stands in front of the demonstrator. If you've got the camera over here and you, you can't see the demonstration, that's really interfering. Or the cameraman and or the cameraman get so engaged in what the guy's doing, he's got the best seat in the house, he forgets to keep the camera on. Well, one of the things I have in the handout, now, the handout I gave you 
is, <clears throat> I really didn't want you, to, if you spend the time taking notes at a demonstration, you can't watch it. If you're um, not taking notes, if you're like me, you forget it. So the, the value of the handout what I'd give is that I've basically taken the notes for you. So that uh, when you get home, when you get home, uh, you can actually uh, read the uh, information that we were talking about today. And I think that's, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, hopefully helpful for that. Anything else? I think sometimes when you come to the end of the subject, um, you know, have to look for, as a professional, look for an ending point as opposed to stretching it out too long. We're talking about, he's saying, as a demonstrator, you need to look for an ending point, someplace that's a logical ending point. Uh, and, and actually, a good way to end too would be not just end, but almost summarize some of the stuff that you've done. Maybe hit some of the key concepts. Obviously, you're not going to go over the whole thing again, but hit key, some of the key concepts is a good way to end. Anything else? Uh, be prepared for different types of equipment. Don't talk down to anyone that you've got in front of you. Don't talk. Don't uh, denigrate the equipment that you're presenting on you. Uh, so be prepared to use different, diff types of different types of equipment. You actually should know what the equipment is, and don't talk. Don't talk bad. Don't 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 no knock the clubs. Lays. That's not a necessary, you know, as a guest, uh, I would, you know, you are a guest at a club, and that would be pretty inconsiderate to, to, uh, to knock their equipment. Uh, okay, how many people here have already have been demonstrators? Have demonstrated? A good number of you. Okay, I want to ask you guys, what are some of the Some of the bad experiences that you've had, some of the things that you you, you that's that's happened that uh, really interfered, inhibited your demonstration. Okay, so you have people in the audience talking. All right, Marty, keep it down back there. <laughs> no, seriously, I think that's a, a very legitimate uh, thing, and we'll, and we'll deal with that. The people in the audience are talking and you're know, trying to demonstrate. There's two, two kinds of that, too. If they're talking, if you two are talking about what he's saying, that's not as bad as if you two are chatting about you haven't seen each other for a while. And, uh, just, just like We're talking about uh, people that are chatting uh, in the audience. Um, and I'm going to turn off my cell phone before I get this next thing. How about make sure the cell phones are turned off? All right. Uh, uh, people that have, uh, what do you do with us? I'm not going to answer the question right now because I want to deal with this. But uh, people that uh, have cell phones on and people who are chatting, whether they're talk, talking about what's being done up here or whether they're just chatting because they haven't seen one another for a while. What do you do about that? Right? Yeah. I, okay. You humiliate them. <laughs> well, I'm not going to respond to that right now. <laughs> um, anything else? The facility. The facility. Well, the, let me stop. what about the facility? There's some things that you have control over and some things you don't. Right. We'll talk about that also. Yeah, I think, uh, and it doesn't happen, it happen often with the uh, individual who would otherwise have an audience. Good. All right. You have someone, he's talking about having someone in the audience who has to, quote, show off that they know as much as the instructor or more. Um, so, uh, say, let's just call it a difficult person in the audience. Do you have room for a difficult person in the audience? Andy keeps wanting me to move back. I sort of move into the audience a lot. Uh, I promise not to sit in your lap. I really, I was, that's all right. But I can't hear. <laughs> sit in the lap, okay. Just, just so I feel like you. coming into the middle here just to to, uh, to hear what you're saying. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's part of my style when I demonstrate. Even when I'm turning and stuff like that, I always come into the audience. I want to talk to the audience. I don't want to have something between me. To me, it's like a podium, and I have a podium between me and the audience, so I don't do that. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, park these and we'll deal with these uh, before we finish. The one thing I want to talk about here then is 
Okay. Where do I have my four steps here? Yeah. These are the four things that I want to do. Actually, uh, <clears throat> if I may, I'll take you to an extra point. If you actually list your key concepts or stages that you're doing on a uh, whiteboard or a pad like this, you can have you number them, and then you keep going back to them each time. Let me explain. Research shows that, and, and this is this is true in demonstrations. It's true in the college class. It's 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 just true with students. That the student's mind wanders 33 percent of the time. I mean, people do. People. I mean, you've got other things in your mind. So your mind's wandering 33 percent of the time. Well, and that's that's you. You don't have control over that. You really don't. So one thing you can do is, is help the student not spend 33% more time trying to figure out where you are when they come back in. And so one thing you can do is to be able to list the steps. So every time I, a lot of times when I'm doing something, I always come back to this and I say, now we're going to talk about this. I use a transition, one, two, three, four. And it, so therefore, if they're gone in between here, they know where I am now here. So. Um, that's a fact, and it does work very, very effectively. We call this sort of a PowerPoint that it, it allows you to, that everyone knows I'm going to be changing topics or changing stages when I come back here. It's just a little technique you can employ. Um, the other thing, and I, I'll have uh, my notes. It's, it's perfectly fine to have notes. If, you, if you've got a, a number of stages you're doing, etc., uh, one of the things that's helpful is to have notes. I mean, you know how to do what you're doing. The, the problem is you know probably too well how to do what you're doing, and it's very easy for you to skip steps. And so by having notes, I know what it is that I want to make sure that I talk about. I mean, I could spend hours talking about this topic, but that's not what we want to do, so I have to be able to have notes in order to hit the points I'm having. So that's one thing that I recommend that you do. One of the things that I do uh, and recommend is obviously a handout. You give that up, up front. I usually talk to the cameraman, let them know what I'm going to be doing. And that's specifically important for some of the demos I do, particularly when I do a big platter demo, because one of my problems with doing a big platter demo for the cameraman is I put a platter blank up here, and obviously the cameraman's usually here and they're ready for me to turn, and the first thing I do is I'll chew it up here, which is okay, but then I turn over here. But I always do the rim first. And that, you know, the cameraman, if I don't tell him ahead of time, he's not going to be ready for this because he's expecting me to do over here, which would be more logical. But there's a reason why I do this, and then I come back and I say, I'm going to be doing most of my turning all here. But it's going to be one, two, then three. So it makes our life a little bit easier for the cameraman. Also, I talked to the cameraman about, you know, I'm going to have my tools here. Where do you want me to put them? I can do this. Uh, I'm not sure many people are going to see it, but where do you want me to place it? So the camera can say, well, place it on the, on the tool rest, place it on the head, or, or place it down here. So that's something that you want to do early on. doesn't mean you're going to have perfect shots, it's going to be a perfect uh, videotape, but at least it facilitates some of that. Uh, part of what I was going to do is actually turn a multi-access uh, birdhouse. Uh, so it was sort of a demo. What I want to do is give you an idea how I actually apply some of these things in my own uh, demonstration. So I'm not going to spend much time turning at all, but I do want to take you through some of the steps. So um, the first thing I do if, you, if I'm asked to do a demonstration is I pre-plan. I find this is really essential. And it consists of three things that are, to me are very important. Time. How much time do I have? Typically, uh, most demos at clubs are 90 minutes, an hour and a half is about what you have. Once in a while, some clubs meet on Saturday and you have an all-day demo. But for the majority of purposes, including supposed leaders, etc., it's typically 90 minutes. But then you have to think and say, wait a minute, 90 minutes? Well, I've got to give an introduction, got to answer some questions, so take out at least 15 minutes minimum. So now you're down to an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so now, time, I have an hour and 15 minutes. Including the questions, the introduction, and uh, everything. Uh, uh, the actual demonstration stuff, I have no more. Maximum, hour and 15 minutes. Then the next thing you have to consider is scope. 
What can I teach in an hour and 15 minutes? I mean, think about it. Uh, when, I, when I'm working here, when I prepare for a demo, I start doing each thing. I, I do it myself. I actually put this on and I write down the step. Mount the, mount the wood. And then I go over here and I say, you know, uh, true it up. And then, you know, mount it in the uh, uh, full jaw chuck, etc. I list all the different steps. And I end up, for just the birdhouse itself, I have copies as if you want it, but I got 37 different steps. And if I had an hour and 15 minutes, I may not be able to cover all 37 steps. So in terms of the scope, the other thing I might have to do is select what steps can I emphasize or should I emphasize, what steps can I not emphasize, or even what steps can I leave out. Now that, that's a real careful here because you can't just go, you know, step one, step five, step ten, and, and skip this stuff and expect people to know what you've done. So in that case, you have to be prepared for it. So, and we'll talk about that. But you do have to be selective of what steps. The third thing you have to consider, and we talked, uh, this was mentioned, is equipment. You have to know what kind of equipment you're going to be having. If I'm doing a 24-inch platter and I have a Delta Mini Wave, I'm going to have problems. Uh, so I always have to find out, one, what the swing is, what the size wave is, so I can bring a smaller blank if I'm doing a, a multi-axis uh, platter or something like that. And uh, so I, I usually bring my own checks, but then I can I make sure I have that adapter for the Powermatic. I'm going to need that one and a quarter, um, etc. So you want to know the equipment. What I've done to help you with the pre-planning is in the handout, uh, there is a check sheet. Now you can modify that any way you want, but there's a check sheet, and, and what it does is page 12, page 11. It's in the book. No, it's page 11. <laughs> um, obviously, the demonstration title, because you know a number of you guys do different demos, and you know a lot of times it's a year ahead of time. And I said, you know, if I don't write it down, what did I what did I say I was going to demonstrate? <laughs> and then uh, uh, the date. And only once did I show up a week late. Uh, uh, actually, that can happen. So uh, I always put the date of the demo and stuff like that, and the, cl and the club name and the host and. And, and uh, uh, even how you're going to get there, you know, if, if you uh, are, uh, are you going to fly or you're going to drive, it makes a big difference in terms of the equipment and the wood and all the other stuff. So you have to have all that kind of information. And then once again with the equipment, the make of the lathe, the size of the, the, uh, the lathe, the, uh, uh, the spindle size, accessories, etc. anything. You could add to this here, but I thought that this might be helpful, at least it has helped me sort of keep track of the different demos I do, and where I'm doing and when I'm doing them. It's nice to show up on time, or at least, at least in the same week. It, it's, uh, I find it usually helpful. So that's something that you can copy and modify or use. Then, so that's my pre-planning. And pre-planning, I'm talking about time, scope, what I can teach, and the equipment that I'm going to be using and need. Then I begin developing the handout. I'm sorry, developing the demo. That's when I'm deciding I'm going to do, a, a, say, a multi-axis birdhouse that I have to go through each of the steps. I have to identify everything that's going to be involved in actually doing that, uh, um, that demo. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing, as I mentioned, you're going to be doing your steps. You have to go through every single step. And then you select the steps that are important. What, are, what is important that I can do within the time I'm doing it? The other thing that's, that's just something to consider is sequencing the steps. I and mean, that sounds really logical. But I've seen demos where you've gotten things, you do this and then do this and you go back and then do this, where that is more confusing for a, a learner to, rather than sequence it and logical. The, lo the sequence must be logical. And that's important. I identify steps uh, that I can do that need to be done or, or don't need to be done or can be done ahead of time. And so what I do is when I do a demo, if I'm going to do the birdhouse, these are the basically the steps that I need to do. I get a pedestal, I'm going to turn, I turn a birdhouse top, I turn a, a birdhouse body, and I turn a perch. And these are the, the blocks I'm going to use. So it goes down from here to here to there's the perch. Here's the body, here's the top. 
and here's a perch. So I have all the stages. Well, I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, I only get an hour and 15 minutes. I may not be able to turn all of this. What do I need to show the guys? Well, it's really important that I show them uh, how to turn a perch. So and, and in my particular case, I like to show the guys the roughing gouge I use. Since I don't use the roughing gouge, I use a continental spindle gouge. So I want to show them that particular tool and explain why I use what I do, how I use it, and why I use it. So I want, I'm going to turn, I'll rough out this piece, and I will uh, then turn it and show them how to do the multi-axis. Well, with the, the body, I say, you know, I would say 99.9% .9 of everyone in the room has no problem whatsoever turning a body. I don't need to show them that. I can skip that. I'll show it to you. I'll come up and do this. I'll say, yeah. Yeah. instead of turning it because I don't have the time, I'll go, gee, I use a block, I drill it out, then I drill the hole for the bird to get in and a little hole for the perch, and then I, I true it up, put a tenon on it, and then I'll shape it as a body. That's as much as I do. So in a matter of a couple minutes, I can show it to you. And usually what I do is I pass it out. So here are the three, three steps. You can see how I did it. I'm not going to turn it. I'll instead focus my time okay, now on doing the pedestal. Then I have the top, I have the, the, the top that goes onto the birdhouse. Well, once again, I'm saying in my mind, I want to show them how to do the top because it's done a little bit differently than the pedestal. There's, there's, a, there's a difference in terms of what you do. But I already showed you how I, I, true, I roughed out something, so I don't need to rough this out again. So if I did anything, I'd start off with a, I already true up blank. So I just saved this much time. I didn't need to do it twice or three times. So I can start off here and then finish up with this. If I have time, it frees me out and say, Guys, if you want to you have fun, you can turn a multi-axis perch. You start off with this, you do a little truing up, and I can show you how to do this. But I may have time to do that. In fact, a lot of times I'll show them how to do a multi-axis bottle stopper because I didn't waste the time truing up other things that I didn't need to, uh, to true up or, or rough out, etc. So I can show them some extras. Very, very important in, in developing this. I always think about what am I going to be turning? It's really nice to show the finished product right up front. So it says, good guys, this is what I'm going to turn. I, I not only have the finished product, but I have the parts of the finished product, and I show them how they go together. Then I begin the turning, so they can put it all in context. So I think about that. Any questions so far? I mean, none of this is... It's, it's, I'm sure it's not new information per se. A, a lot of it, when you look at it, you think of the information and say, yeah, you know, it makes sense. This is, but these are things that if you do these things, it's going to make, make you more successful. Uh, if you violate, it's a, it's a recipe. Let's face it, it's really a recipe. You know, you have the skills of turning, and it's, you, know, you do A, B, C, D, and you get through your turning, and it comes out really nice. Well, teaching is the same kind of thing. There's certain skills, there's certain things you do. It's a recipe. It's no different than if, if uh, my mother made lasagna and she left out the oregano. We know what's going to happen. Well, it's the same thing with teaching. <laughs> you leave out the oregano and you're not going to have a very successful demo or not as a successful demo. Um, so it's really important that you know what, what the uh, ingredients are. One other thing I do in terms of preparing for the demo or actually doing this, uh, developing the demo, after I get through it and I put all the steps down, I actually practice the demo. Now, let me explain that. I'm not saying you're practicing your skills if you need skill or even how to do that particular platter or birdhouse. I'm saying you practice it so you understand the timing that you're doing. In other words, you know, uh, you, you get an hour, quote, an hour and 15 minutes. Do you know for sure that you can cover your information in an hour and 15 minutes? And so I actually practice it. I'll get in there and I'll, I'll time myself. I'm covering, and if I find, gee, I'm taking an hour and 45 minutes. All right, what else can I leave out? What can I pre-prepare? And that's, that's the, to me, is the value of, of the, uh, the practice. So you have to consider time. You just can't go on. 
you ever practice your demo with a camera? I wouldn't want to look at myself that much. I practice in front of a group. I'll practice in front of, uh, yeah. A lot of people who know me know that my shop's open on Fridays. I get 11 lays, and for years people have been coming. And, and uh, it's free, and they just come and turn with me. Uh, and so one of the prices they pay for that is if I'm doing a new demo, they're my guinea pig. <laughs> so I will actually demonstrate. Seriously, I do this with a couple guys. I'll demonstrate. And then if they ask me questions, I then, a lot of times, I'll incorporate those questions into my demonstration. So I get valuable information for doing that. So that's the kind of practice I do. I'm not really looking at the camera so much because I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, it's not the presentation skills so much. It's, it's really is the preparation. So I, I really don't, I'm not, I'm not looking at how I'm, I'm coming across in the camera. I'm really not. Um, get back to, to, to Jim's question was concerned about this nine o'clock fixed time. The problem is that's reality. I mean, let's face it. You guys, you have a meeting, and it's not 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. So be respectful for the for the uh, <clears throat> demonstrators to tell them ahead of time. You get an hour and a half. I mean, you know, if you told me an hour and a half and you gave me three hours, I'd have a problem. Well, I probably wouldn't. I got a big mouth. I can go on and on and on. But uh, uh, but seriously, if you only gave me an hour, then that might be a problem because I planned for an hour and 15 minutes. But but I think that. Uh, the, 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 uh, 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 the key thing is that plan the time you have and let, uh, I would let you know. I got around 15 minutes to do this demo. All right. What I want to do now is, I feel very strongly about this, and that is to develop a handout. A demonstration, as I said before, is a teaching method. It's, it's, you're out there teaching. And so, and really, the success of your demonstration is how well can the people who see you do what you taught them. Now, if, if people have, some people may not have the background, they may just have started turning that day, you know, other people have a lot more experience. And so, you know, aiming in, in the middle here, if you're demonstrating something, you want to be effective as a teacher, because that's what you're doing is teaching. Well, a demonstration is limited. If you think about it, you hear me talk and I might be demonstrating 37 steps, and that's just part of the demonstration I do, because usually I do a box and something else with it. So I get, you know, I might have 50, 60 steps. If you're like me, after you get through the third step, I'm still, <laughs> and you keep going, I'm starting to figure out what was back over here. And, 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 uh, and so if you start taking notes, so you remember the steps, you're not watching. I mean, and if you're watching, you're not taking notes, and I'm not remembering. So I mean, that's a problem. It's a limitation of the, the, just the teaching method of demonstration. The ideal demonstration is you would have a demonstration, and then you do a workshop, and everyone is hands on. Well, that's not going to happen at 10 o'clock at night. We're not going to then set up for 50 people to do to hour now. We're going to we're going to take the next three hours and make a platter. I mean, that's not very practical. I can't control that. But one thing I can control is I can give you something that's going to quote, have the steps involved, have the notes for you, have the measurements, so you can go home and then try doing it. I've taken the demonstration to one more level. I've added one enhancement to it to, to make sure that there is something that you could do with it. So that's why I feel very strongly about a handout. I think it really does enhance the demonstration. Marty. Put out the handout Okay, what I do is, good point, Marty. Uh, Marty wants to know, when do you give the handout out? Um, I always give the handout up front. And let me explain. I find people don't read the handout while I'm talking. They really don't. I mean, they may look at it, which is fine. That's, that's, that's superb. But the, the thing is, and I, and I explain what the handout is. Hey, guys, I, I hope you take some notes. I've got the, uh, the steps in there. I've got measurements. I've got all kinds of things in there so that when you get home, you can do this stuff. So a lot of people will look at it, which is great, <laughs> thumb through it, but, but they're, not, uh, uh, they're not reading the handout. I mean, if you look at here, I mean, I'm hoping it's worth reading, but they're not reading it now. They may look at it and, 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 and uh, et cetera, which is perfectly fine. <laughs> 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 
Almighty started reading the handout. <laughs> but seriously, I, I give it up front because I want you to know, guys, the purpose of the handout is I'm taking notes for you. You know, so you can relax. I'm going to relax because hopefully I'm prepared. And, and we'll enjoy it. Let's enjoy it together. You don't have to be worried about taking all these notes. That's why I give it up front. Let me, let me explain really quickly. The handout is also a recipe. It's really just, I have very simple elements in it. If you look at my handouts, and there's one in the back of the handout on the, on the birdhouse. So uh, that's a typical handout that I do. All the demonstrations I do, uh, I have a handout for. In fact, if you go on my website, I have about a dozen handouts, because uh, I even get all my Friday guys to start, if they're doing something neat, I have them develop a handout. They're all PDF files. You can all download them and use them. Uh, but what I try to do is, <laughs> is uh, uh, I, I want a title, just a brief title, so that you know what the demonstration's about. An introduction. Basically, an introduction is telling you what it is you're going to see, very, very briefly. Also, in the introduction, I also put any uh, credits. It's like my, my uh, multi-axis platter I did. I got the idea from John Utek up in Hickory when I was doing another demo and he showed me what he did and he shared his measurements with me. I went home and did this stuff and and etc. etc. Et so I give credit to John. I didn't come up with the idea, he did. And and uh, so that's all into the introduction. And then uh, design considerations. You know, any uh, that's a nice thing to know. People want to know, you know, why you're doing what you're doing in terms of design. I do the multi-axis and I do beading and texture. So I explain some of that stuff. Uh, what would you use? If it's important, that's, that it is, if it's important, it's particularly important, you put it in the handout then. Because, you know, why are you using that, that, uh, that wood? Uh, it may not be important. And you can say, you know, basically you can do this with any wood. But then maybe would you say, gee, I would not recommend you use that wood because. Once again, none of these things are long. You're not writing a book. You're writing a couple pages. At, at, uh, tools. A lot of guys want to know, you know, what tools you're using. It may be you can say, I use a 38 inch spindle gauze, but you could use something else if you wanted to. I mean, maybe the tools are not, are not necessary that you have to use those exact tools. But then again, it may be. You may say, gee, I recommend you use a Proxon long neck grinder to do your grinding because. I usually always like to put in because. Um, the steps. You have to have the steps. That's what the whole thing is about. What are the steps? A, B, C, D. The idea is is can someone use it to make the, uh, the piece? What, what I do with all of my handouts, I put, when I'm doing a handout, and I do this, my background is instructional design. I've been an instructional professional educator my whole life. And, and, uh, and so I should be able to develop a handout. Uh, but I've never been able to develop a handout that I can use completely. Because the problem with wood turning is I know more than I no, I know sometimes, so I leave things out. So what I do is this, and, and this is what I recommend you do with your handout. I put my handout on the bench back here, and then I come and I start step one, and I do it. Step two, and I do this, and then I might do something else. And I go over here, and I'll, I'll mark that down. Okay, I add that to my handout. And I find I've never produced a handout that I haven't added things after I started. You know, I, I do that. That's my first test of the handout. Then I do this all the time. I have my Friday guys. They're all my victims. I get my Friday guys. So I might have Joy come up here and say, Joy, would you take the handout? Here's the wood. And I want you to make that. And I just stand to the side like this. If Joy turns to me and says, Frank... What do you do here? Right in my handout. Because as a, I'm developing an instructional handout, if she has to ask me questions, I, as an instructor, left something out. Not she as a student, but as I as the teacher was a failing right there. So I then add that to my, so she's enriching my handout by practicing that. And I do that all the time. Every handout I've ever done. There comes a point when you have to expect your clientele to know what to do. You don't have to go back and explain them that that dull tool did not cut like it was supposed to. So where, where, there's a line in there somewhere where... Jim's asking uh, where's the line you draw in terms of what you're, you're, you're putting in your uh, handout knot. 
actually, it's a very, very good question. A very good statement, actually. Uh, I'm not teaching the shop a term with a shop tool or dull tool, so I don't put that in my hand out. If Joy's using a dull tool, <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> but seriously, seriously, that's not part of my handout. But that's a good point. I'm going to put the steps on how to do this. It's it's no different. We let's say we, this uh, this young turner that came uh, and I said he spent 20 minutes talking about himself. Then he told us what a faceplate was. I'm not going to tell people what a faceplate is. <laughs> uh, I do make some assumptions. And, and so the key thing is that if you, remember now, when I talk about someone being able to do this, if you've never turned before, and you come to do a multi-axis turning, I don't think my instructional handout is good enough to overcome your lack of experience. But if you have basic experience with turning, you can do it. You should be able to do it if my handout's good. Okay? I have to take some responsibility for this. A certain level, and that's what I usually teach to. I don't dumb down my classes, I don't dumb down my demonstration. I find that disrespectful to the audience. I teach it at you know, sort of a middle level in here and stuff. Measurements, let me, let me just ref uh, talk about this, because a lot of guys will tell me, and, I, and I've heard this here, they'll say, gee, Frank, you know, how big, you know? And a lot of times the response will be, eh, shh, doesn't make any difference. In many cases, it doesn't make a difference. However, if you're a new turner, and the first time you're doing this birdhouse, the first time you're doing this, this thing, you want measurements. It's helpful, very helpful. So in here, I put the exact measurements. Does that birdhouse have to be exactly that size? No. Does the roof have to be exactly that size? No. But will it help someone who's never done it before? Absolutely. And then once they've done it, they say, oh, hell, I'm going to have a bigger roof, or I'm going to have this, or I'm going to do this. Then they're on their own, and they, they, they go beyond that. But I have found that it, I don't care what you're doing, if you give measurements, even if they're not absolutely necessary, it's a very helpful, very, very helpful. So I recommend you do measurements, even, you know, even if it's, quote, not absolutely necessary. Um, illustrations and photos. I use usually both. Let me explain why. Some people, some people are what we call independent uh, learners. <laughs> I, you know, the thing is, I can't hear anything. I keep going in here. Um, uh, is, is um, some people are feel dependent, feel independent learners. Some people actually look at a photograph and can learn really well from a photograph. Other people look at an illustration that has all the background gone and, and they learn more from an illustration than they will in a photograph. So there are people who have different learning styles. So what I usually do with all my handouts, if you notice, I always have drawings and I have photographs. <laughs> so I'm trying to reach a wider audience, that's all. That's why I have both. And, it, and there are, you'll find that, and that does work. Uh, sources. A lot of people want to know if you're doing something, you know, if I'm, say I'm coloring, I do a lot of coloring and stuff, where'd you get the dyes or the inks or the acrylics or, you know, they want to know the source. And, and that's nice to put in. It just, once again, if you look at the handouts, I'm not talking about writing a book, I'm talking about writing a couple pages. So you give a little sources of this or this or what to do the, the tool making and they ask me, you know, where do you get the steel? Right there in my handout. Tells you exactly where I ordered the steel from. Um, and then the other one, the last one, suggestions for further study. Sometimes, I mean, that's meaningful. Other times it may not be meaningful. But if I was doing a bowl class or, or doing a bowl demo, and I'm talking about design and stuff like that, okay, I, I, I always refer to, I said, you know, there's a really good book on bowl design. I really recommend, and I put it in my handout, you might be interested in looking at this book, because there's a lot more information on bold design, etc., in this particular book. You know, that, that's just another way of helping uh, the student. If, if it's not meaningful, if what you're doing is unique and there's no other re reading, don't worry about it. But it's just something for you to think about. That's your handout. That's to me, is, is what makes a handout. Those are the elements. Um, and they say, the proof of the pudding is, when you put it on the bench, can someone use it and, and, and turn the item? Okay, let me uh, uh, go down. We did the, the three thing now, delivery. The last thing actually we do, after we've done our pre-planning, our development, our handout, now we're actually gonna deliver the, the, uh, uh, the demonstration. And once again, to me, this is, this is only, we have four things, and this is no more important 
are no less important than any other step. It's just one of the steps. A lot of things that, you know, what's, what's all these presentation skills, etc., etc., etc. The best presentation skill is to be prepared. You, you come uh, and you're prepared. You, 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 you know the wood, the steps, the stages, etc., etc. The first thing I do when I do a demonstration is hand out, give the handouts out. So I want everyone to know that they have a handout, uh, that they don't have to take notes, uh, and I explain the purpose and what's in it. That's the first thing I do. Um, I lay out my tools. I always have a tool so that I have it clear that I can, if I'm doing a demo, I'm going to be turning this. I have my tools here. And so, if, you know, there, as the handout's being handed out, people can come up and see the tools. We're wood turners. We love to look at tools. We love to touch tools. And so, uh, a, a lot of times, you know, even after I'm using a tool or talking about a tool, I'll even hand it out. Because wood turners, you know, when I tell geez, people, I, 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 this is my roughing gouge, I don't use a roughing gouge, I use a content of spindle gouge, and I tell them why, etc. People like to see, well, what, what is he talking about? What is he actually, what is it, uh, you know, let me, let me feel that he was talking about. So that's part of it that, that I do now. So I want them to be able to see it. The other thing that's very important, very important, I think, is show people your finished product and say, guys, this is what I'm turning. Remember, this is what I'm turning. And when I, a lot of times I do is I'll say, guys, you know, you don't have to have a finished birdhouse. You could actually take a branch and, and drill a hole in it. So here's a, here's a variation. There's a variation. And I might even go so far as saying, gee, if you didn't want to do a, a, a birdhouse, replace the birdhouse body with a box, and you can do a box. And I, then I even have uh, bottle stoppers. But the point being is I show them the finished product and then some variations. When I do my platters, I usually have a bunch of platters because I want to show them all the different kind of designs and, and surface embellishments and stuff that they can do. I, I've been to demos where, I've, you know, as I say, I've never seen the finished product. And, and that's not in, very enlightening. So once I have all my stuff displayed and people can come up and see it, I usually check out the lathe, uh, make sure that I have... Uh, uh, the right size chuck and and uh, and cetera, 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 that I'm going to need that the fact that the uh, the lathe is plugged in and uh, actually works and and cetera. So I do spend a little time doing that. Um, the other thing I always do is I always say I talk to the cameraman. I always I, I give him a hard time, but I still I talk to the cameraman. I'm not going to change my demonstration to suit the camera. In the sense that uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who was going to change his demonstration because he saw, you know, the camera having to move all around. No, it, you could really ruin your demonstration that way. What I try to do is really prepare them, let them know I'm going to be doing. And I told you before, as I do, like with the the platter, I put the platter blank on, tell them I'm going to do it here, and they expect me to do here, and I tell them I'm going to do here, <laughs> so they know they have to move that camera around. And once I'm gone, I tell them, I'm going to do this second, but I'm never going to go back there again. All the rest of the demo, you can be over here, and I'm going to be here. So that gives them some idea. And then as I said before, you ask, where are you going to put the tool? Where, would you like me to put it here, here, over here? So very little simple little things like that. In the back of the handout, I have a sheet on tips to the cameraman. And I, I think that uh, and that goes beyond just talking to the cameraman. Uh, but it's actually uh, uh, something that I think all cameramen should know. It's like one thing a cameraman should never do is look at the camera. Uh, you actually shouldn't look to the camera. You actually should be watching the monitor. If the cameraman's watching the monitor, he sees what you see. It's, I mean, I uh, <coughs> it's been many years developing instructional videotapes. And, and when I was teaching how to do this, I said, don't look at the camera. Look at the monitor. That's what the student's going to see. If you can't see what, what's needed to be seen here, I don't care what's in the camera, it's meaningless. So that's what you look at. But anyway, those are some of the tips and you can look at that um, at your leisure. I, I briefly introduce myself. I don't spend 20 minutes telling you who I am and about my kids and my dogs and my cats and my whatever else I might have and etc. etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, Briefly, <laughs> briefly, you know, <laughs> no one cares. They really don't. I mean, I mean, uh, I've, I've uh, demos where you, pictures of people's animals and, and I mean it just, that's not why I'm here 
uh, and so uh, <clears throat> what I try to do is, as I say, in the interview I introduce myself, I introduce the handout, I tell you what it's about, etc. Uh, I also start, try to establish rapport in, in terms of uh, I recognize the audience. In, in one way you do that, and, and, I, and I mean this very sincerely, I've demonstrated a lot of different clubs, and I see there's a lot of great turners out there. I mean, they're not demonstrators, but they're great turners. I go and I see these clubs and I look and see all their, their show and tell, and damn it, there's a lot of nice stuff out there. I wish I could do some of that stuff. I mean, seriously, there's a lot of beautiful stuff out there, and I recognize it. I'm not talking to, you know, someone that, that, that knows nothing about turning. I might be doing turning X, but they may be doing turning Y a hell of a lot better than me. And, but so I recognize that, uh, and I think that they realize, you know, I'm not coming and, and going to be talking down to them. Never insult your audience. Don't explain what a faceplate is. <laughs> I mean, seriously, don't insult your audience. You don't want to do that. You don't need to do that. Um, that if if uh, um, if you're if you're using a particular technique or something like that, you don't have to defend anything. All you do is explain why you do what you do. You know, if I'm turning with my left hand like this, that's the way I turn, and, and I'll tell you why. I don't need to defend it or, or, or anything else, but that's what I do. Uh, and, and it's like, um, I always tell my guys when I'm turning, I, I turn a particular way, and, and so I, the way I use my tools and stuff, you can't catch them. And, and, um, uh, and so I show them that, I share that with them. Not because my way is better than their way, it's just, hey, I guys, I like to turn this way and that way I can still watch TV. I don't have to watch what I'm doing. I'm watching TV while I'm turning. And then it's a, late at night when I do real fine finishes, I always have a glass of wine. So that's the way I turn. You know, it uh, doesn't mean that you have to do that. <laughs> and I'm not defending it. That's just the way I turn, I enjoy it. Um, but I do explain each of the steps as I go along. So if I was to do this, I would explain, I would come back here and I would, I would explain the fact I'm roughing this out, why I'm roughing it out the way I do, why I'm using this tool, how I use this tool. So not just, the, the key thing that I find with a lot of audiences is not explaining just how you're doing something, but what they really want to know is why you're doing it that way. Now I mean, seriously, it's like when I do this, I would have my, this drop way down here, and I rough out like this, because I have a 25 degree grind usually, and I come at it, and why I use this particular spindle gouge, how I can turn and rough out this, etc. And, and they want to know why. Why are you doing that? Why are you not using roughing gouges? What's, you know, what's the difference and etc. That's what I explain to them. That's what I'm sharing with them. I'm not talking down to them, not saying you've got to get rid of your roughing gouges, but I'm just saying here's how I do it and why I do it. Uh, <clears throat> now, one of the things that uh, 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 we talked about earlier was also answering questions. We talk about repeating questions, and sometimes you get to repeat it so I can hear it. But um, uh, you want to acknowledge all questions. You do. And you want to answer them as efficiently as possible. But if you have someone asking questions and it's, it's just going to be really involved and keep going, what we do is we, we just say, look, that's a good question. I you know, want to answer that, but we don't really have time right now to answer that. I, I gotta, we're going to move on. I'm going to park that question. And what I usually do is I'll go up to the board and I'll literally write up here, park, and I'll write down just the abbreviated version of the question. I'm not ignoring it, I'm not, uh, to, but I'm saying, look, we, gotta, we can't take the time now, I'll deal with it later, let me park it right here. And so that's a, that's a really good way of dealing with uh, uh, a question that's gonna keep coming, just take up too much time. Um, I always do leave, I always try to leave questions at the end, I leave time, even just a couple minutes, if there's any questions. And then, as you mentioned earlier, I would stay afterwards if someone needed uh, further information. The other thing I do is I really try to speak to the audience. Even when I'm turning, I usually walk in front of the lady. It's just, it's just my style. I, I mean, there's nothing. I can't, I am uncomfortable talking. I guess I've been a teacher my whole life. I just, I'm uncomfortable having this between me and you. Uh, it might drive the cameraman crazy, but but when I, when I want to do something, I love to hand out my tools, I hand out my pots, I, you know, if I did this, I would, I would hand out all these pieces and pass them out to you. You know, I, I like to get the audience engaged, 
And, and so I find by speaking directly to the audience, I get much more engagement. Were you a Baptist preacher in your previous life? No, it was something, I tell you. <laughs> no, I was a, uh, uh, the thing is, it's a, uh, I really do. I, I, I really enjoy teaching, but I enjoy talking and want to do it face to face. Don't do this, even with the mic. Now I'm not talking to you, but I'm going to tell you about my tool over here that I got. You don't want to talk with your back to the audience. And we have a tendency as demonstrators to do that without thinking about it. I mean, seriously, I'm probably as guilty as anyone else. I have to really constantly stop talking. <laughs> this is where we talk to people. I mean, if you and I are talking here, we're not going to do this. <laughs> so, so, so try to remember that. It, it, it's, it, to me, it's just so much more meaningful. If you, uh, if you have a face shield, lift it. I mean, I've seen so many demonstrators talk, and it, you know, I don't care even with a mic. It just it really just does sound really funny with a face shield in front of you. Uh, so lift the face shield. Uh, even the idea of having a face shield between me and you would bother me. Uh, it just and don't wander off the topic. That's that, that's for us wood turners. That's easy to do. Come on, it really is. Let's admit it. I mean, you want to start talking about a particular wood or a particular this or a particular tool? Oh, come on, guys. We can easily go off. I mean, it doesn't take much to get me to, to you know to talk about. So I have to be real conscious about that. What am I here for? What am I focused? Because, because you know, I only have a certain amount of time, and I want to get through what the guys want want me to get through. So I have to be very diligent, and not to wander off the topic. And, and I'm very conscious of that because I am very easy. It's very easy to distract me, and get me going on something else. Um, and uh, uh, humor is is generally appreciated. It's fun. You guys are sitting for an hour and a half. It's nice to laugh a couple times, but don't. Don't feel you need to be a stand-up comic. I mean, I'm telling you, I couldn't tell a joke to save my life. I really couldn't. Uh, but, I mean, you wanted to make it entertaining. You want to make, not entertaining, some enjoyable. But we're, a lot of us aren't uh, stand-up comics. And, and we don't want to be. You don't want to be t t taking all the time to talk, you know, telling uh, like folks tales and, and telling jokes, etc. That's not really why the people came. They want to know how you're doing X, Y, Z. Yes, you can make it enjoyable, relaxed, and, and even fun. But, but make sure you don't become a stand-up comic. Unless they brought you there to be entertaining. <laughs> and they don't care what you're turning. <laughs> Which usually isn't the case. Um, the other thing is that uh, I always, from time to time, what I would typically do is check the feedback. If I'm doing a, a demo, I can't see this here. So if I'm over here, and I'm, I'm doing something, and I'm trying to show people maybe the bevel or something like that, it's okay to ask, can you see that? You know, I want to get some feedback. I mean, what's the sense of my showing you that particular thing if you can't see it? So I need feedback from the audience. That's why I find questions are really good, because obviously you're thinking about something I said to ask a question. So I, I get some feedback that way by finding whether, can they hear me? Can they see it? It doesn't hurt it once in a while during the course of the uh, demo to get that feedback. The other things that I do is, um, I, I, do sh I told you I pass around my tools. I pass around the tools, I pass around the pieces. Uh, I think I appreciate that when I've seen other demonstrators. I think most people do appreciate that. It's a very simple thing and a lot of times I'll have a second copy of the tool so it's passing around so I, I, I can then, well I have another roughing gauze that I'll use or something like that. And. Uh, um, I mean, if you're not comfortable doing that, then, then don't do it. But I am very comfortable, and I think people generally appreciate it. I don't sand. Uh, sand or finish, I generally don't do that. It's, it's, not a, it's not a particularly helpful thing to have a lot of sanding, particularly if I'm doing a platter. Oh, I can create a lot of dust, and that wouldn't be very meaningful. Plus, I don't really think you guys need to have me teach you how to sand. I mean, think about it. You know, and I'm taking your time, your time, to do all of that. I don't think that's fair either. But I do this. I bring a piece of sandpaper with me. When I'm doing this multi-access, the reason being is I'll tell the guys, you need to sand each step as you go along. You can't go back afterwards. So I might take all of two or three seconds and go, you know, you got to sand that. And while it's going around, you can sand it here. But once you move here, you can't go back. And that's it. I might do that once or twice, but that's the length of the sanding I do. This thing will last years. I mean, I can get I can get ten years out of this piece of sandpaper. But seriously, that's the only sanding I do. 
And the other thing I don't do, I don't finish my pieces. Okay, the guys really, unless, unless you ask me, say, Frank, oh, we want to get into finishing, we want to get into coloring, we want to get into, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Fine, I'll, I'll talk about finishing. But you want to do this, so I'm not going to waste your time. You know, I'm not turning out a gallery piece to, I'm showing you how I did this. I don't care if, what it looks like. Uh, and, and I really don't, in a sense, if I could teach you how to do that, then I'm successful. I'm not doing this for me. I'm trying to teach something. And so I, I've seen people spend a great deal of time, a great deal of time finishing, I'm really concentrating finishing stuff. When they get through, they got a piece that you can put right in the gallery. Unless that was part of your demo, you shouldn't do it. Now, if it's part of your demo, that's different. Remember, what is your purpose? What is your focus? The other thing is uh, using visual aids. I find even things like this, a simple, uh, simple uh, um, pad or whiteboard can be very helpful, but use it. But don't also get to the point that it's distracting, where you've got your back to it and you're just, uh, 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 you're writing up here or you're scratching all over the place and people can't see what you're doing. But these can be very effective uh, uh, tools. Um, and don't be afraid to use notes. I have this here. What I did was I got all my, I got this uh, uh, <coughs> demo and I wanted to make sure these were the points. Now they're all covered, it's all written out in 10 pages in the book, but these were the points I wanted to cover with you guys. So I have notes. I didn't memorize, I mean I know the content, I'm very comfortable with the content, but I want to make sure there's certain points I wanted to cover. And so I use notes. And when I do a demo, I make sure the same thing. What are the points I want to cover? What are the, the key concepts I want to get across? Because once again, you know this stuff so well, it's easy for you to breeze over something um, it would, if you didn't have it down here. So, um, any questions at this time? Let's take just a couple minutes. Oh, by the way, before I do that, let me, I'm sorry, uh, let me, uh, um, in the, uh, in the handout, in addition to the paper on, that explains all what I just said, so you guys could have left early, uh, is there's a list of do's and there's a list of don'ts. I'm sure you guys could probably add, those that have been demonstrated, I'm sure you could probably add to that. And there's a list of tips to the ca uh, cameraman. So those are some extra stuff. And then, once again, there's the handout uh, that gives you just a sample of what, what a handout would look like. So that's all there for you. We won't necessarily, I don't want to read that down. I think that sort of summarizes a lot of this. But what I do want to do is look at some of the stuff that you guys had mentioned. You talked about camera work early on, some of the problems as, as a demonstrator, and the idea is to talk to the camera beforehand, to give them a heads up. Simple as that. Will it solve all the problems? No. But at least we'll give them a heads up. Uh, <clears throat> I think that, I, I hope that I've convinced you guys that a handout is meaningful. Would actually enhance your uh, demo. And you know the thing that's interesting about that, guys? You'll never get rid of it. I mean, that's something that these guys are going to keep forever. I'm oh, seriously. They may forget you in a demo, but they're not going to forget that handout. And I, I find so many, I read really so many of the guys who've been in demos that I've been, will come up to me afterwards and tell me how they turned a multi-axis platter. They use my handout and turn a multi-axis platter. And for a demonstrator, that's really gratifying. And I know for you guys that have done it, when someone say, gee, you know, I saw your demonstration, I went home and I did that. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. And I think the handouts really do help that. Um, the idea of a lack of an endpoint. Well, one way you can do is something like this. This is my summary. Um, we're going to make sure we're going to bring this to a uh, close to make sure that we've covered some of the concerns that you guys raise. So this is going to be actually my endpoint. Equipment issues. I had equipment issue uh, uh, early on the first time I did this because we don't have a knockout bar for this. So Andy solved that problem and he came up with a drill. Question is, what end do you use? No, uh, <laughs> we had to improvise. Expect the unexpected, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, uh, say all questions are, are meaningful. They really are. It's just if you can't answer them, park them and deal with them at the end. Uh, oh, I'm glad we got to this. T audience talking to one another. Uh, uh, what would I do about it? 
nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm not a disciplinarian. I'm not there to... These are adults. You know, I'm there as a guest. And I'm going to tell you to shut up? I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> you know, don't do that. I'm serious. Don't do that. I would look at the... the, the, the what would I do? Okay? I'd look at the club member, the president, the program guy, the camera, anyone and say, hey, you know, just a little signal. They, 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 they know what's going on. Let the club deal with it. Is there anything you can do as a demonstrator to sort of grab their attention back? Um, well, you know, the thing is, I don't want to. Is there something I could do to grab your attention back? Well, I could sing, but that would be horrible. Uh, no, what I do, in all honesty, if there's a problem, you know, you guys might not have seen each other for, you know, a month or so or two months and all of a sudden, etc. cetera, uh, or you may be talking about something I did. If it's disrupting other people, the club is going to take care of it. They really do. I've never, I've never had a problem, and and I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass you. I don't want to uh, discipline you. You're an adult. I don't need to do that. I'm not there to do that. It doesn't need to be done. I always go to the club. Uh, same thing. Someone asked me uh, the other uh, time I did this. What about cell phones? Would an introduction where I tell everyone to close their cell phones? Hell no. They're adults. I even forget sometimes to close my, which I did. Uh, I usually put it on silent. I forget sometimes. They forget. No big deal, you know. But once again, they're adults. They're responsible adults. If there's a problem, let the club deal with it. You're not there to discipline other people's in, 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 other adults. You really aren't. I'd, I'd say, don't touch that. You don't need to touch it. Don't touch it. It really, it's a win. It's a it's a lose lose for you as a demonstrator. Um, logistics, sight and sound. Well, sometimes you have control of it. Sometimes you don't. And, and right now, uh, uh, you know, we worked out, they got the camera people there, I've got the uh, sound working. Yesterday, <laughs> I was in the other room, and then uh, Steve Sinner was in here, when he was talking, he, he started before I did, the speakers over there worked, right in my room. Uh, and then we were rushing around to, uh, to try to get the speaker and stuff like that, and then I hit the camera and I started, I was bleeding, coming down, starting the demo with the blood coming down the side of my head. Uh, expect the unexpected. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> so the logistics. You have some control, others you don't. And and uh, so here I, I, I had little control. I set up the table so you guys could see things, blah, blah, blah. So do that. Uh, and <clears throat> difficult participant, as I said, let the club deal with it. What I want to do, if you guys will bear with me, just one, one minute, seriously. I showed you this. This is an extra. I like to do this sort of as a... I always like that sort of frosting on the cake, a little extra. Here's what a friend of mine, one of my Friday guys, I've got him, I hope the guys become demonstrators and set heads. These are the cutest things in the world. I mean, they really are, guys. Can you see this? I mean, they're the cutest things in the world. Whoops, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. <laughs> but he does, he has a whole community of these with different hats. And so he shows you, like, here's a different hat here. He shows you each of the steps, I had him do three of these bars that he actually could hand out, and then he has a whole bunch of these as finished products. This is a nice way of teaching. So now he can, you know, while he's doing his demo and stuff, he actually can show you. He has uh, several ones with the hats. He has another one with the snowman. This is just a simple little thing, but look at the steps, and you can follow it right through. Thank you guys, very much.